Hello everybody, good morning. Welcome to another Photo Justice Photo Moment. It is Monday the 1st, yes, the 1st of August. We are into another month already. And over the weekend, I got an email asking a question about the GX85. And the question was about the flash. So the flash that's on the GX85, and this by the way is um, quite the small little compact camera with a monstrous tripod plate on it now. Uh, the flash that's built in is just a tiny little pop-up flash. So let's face it, not the most useful thing in the world. Uh, but it's, you know, it's there as a fill flash if you need a little, little kicker here and there. On earlier versions of this, um, <laughs> sorry, on earlier versions of this camera, which was actually the GX7. So the, it's kind of an odd thing. When the GX7, um, sorry, when the GX85, this camera was released, it was called the GX85 and the GX80, depending on where you are. Turns out in Japan, it's being sold as the GX7 Mark II, which is quite curious. So naturally, users started looking at this camera as an upgrade to the GX7, which in many regards it is. Uh, it is superior on almost every level to the GX7. Uh, but one of the curious things that is not in this camera that was on the GX7 is the ability to use this tiny little flash as a trigger for other wireless flashes. So if you were to use other wireless, other flashes from the Lumix lineup, all of which have wireless built into them, this little flash won't trigger it, whereas if you had the GX7, it would. Um, so it's kind of a bummer. Other cameras like the GH4, uh, or rather the GX8, don't have a built-in flash, so you have to add an extra flash to do that anyway. But on a camera like this, where you've got this little pop-up flash, you think, well, that'd be kind of cool if you could do that. So if if you have this camera and you want to control external flashes, you're, you have a couple of options. First off, you can just get a smallest version, so the cheapest way to do it would be, well, not cheapest, but a way to do it would be to get a smaller Lumix flash. So this is the uh, 360, there's two models, 360 and 580, DMW FL580L and DMW FL360L. Um, that's the, uh, sorry, my ring's going off the hook here. Um, those are the two basic models. This You can tell the physical size difference there. So I could put this on here and then enable the wireless activity, which I want to show you. So give me just a moment here. I realize I don't have that in here. Let me get my wires hooked up. Just a moment here. Find where, where did I put that thing? Here we go, here we go. Okay, so. I forgot to hook this up ahead of time. So part of the reason I'm a little discombobulated right now is because I, the next thing I'm gonna tell you about this is something I just figured out a few minutes before I went on the air and I was trying to get confirmation whether this is really um, working or really is available the way that I saw it or what the deal is. So we'll, we'll get to that. Okay, so cables, excuse me, plug you in here. And come here, there we go. And plug you into here. I've never actually tried it with this camera. I think this is gonna work. It may not, because this may not be set up properly. Since I didn't get to that, if not, it's okay. We can we can do it without. But it's always nice to be able to see the menu system on here. Let me put this thing back on my tripod so I'm not bouncing all over the place. Hey, look at that, it's working, cool. All right, um, let's see here. I'm gonna point this thing somewhere so that you're gonna get a view of my audio configuration. Okay, uh, here we go. So let's let's dark. That's bright. Let's bring it down a little bit. Okay. So here's um, here's looking through the camera, going to the menu system. I'm gonna take this flash off. Let's just let's take this back off for a moment. So okay, the camera the flash is back off. Let's go back to the menu. Uh, under the camera settings, so there's camera settings then flash. Go to flash, and you'll see a fire, firing modes TTL uh, or manual. You know flash mode is it. Regular flash, red eye, slow shutter, or red eye and slow shutter. You have all these modes that you would expect. And you scroll down to the next page, and you'll see there's a wireless option, but it's off, and I can't get to it. It's it's grayed out. So the reason for that, of course, is quite simply that this little pop-up flash doesn't do the wireless triggering. Okay, so let me let's see here. I'm gonna go ahead and slide this guy back on. So that's on now. Let's go back into the menu, and now I'm gonna go back into the flash you'll see that wireless is available. So I can go into wireless, I can turn that on or off. So wireless on means that the flash that's on the camera can now control other flashes. So you get into a whole setup of the other flashes, we don't need to get into all that now, but that is one of the options you have. But unfortunately this is, I don't even know how much this thing costs. Let's see, what does this guy cost? 
uh, Lumix FL360 is $227, looks like, roughly call it two, 225 to 250 depending where you buy it. So that's the price of this, but still not, you know, not free. Um, it's a flash, it's a great flash, but if your main purpose is just to have something to trigger external flashes, kind of an expensive way to go. So there are other options. Now, options that I've used, I've been using these for years, are, these are Fotix triggers. These are what I call dumb triggers. This, they don't have any TTL, there's no fancy anything. It basically says fire, you know, from the camera it fires and the receiver receives the fire signal and that's it. So everything has to be in manual, which personally, when I'm working with strobes, I almost always like to shoot in full manual. Uh, TTL is fantastic and there are obviously times for it, especially if you're in an event, things are moving constantly, but most of my strobe work is in the studio or at least a studio-like environment where I can take the time to really dial it in the way I want it. So that's just, that's just me, that's the way I like to work. So using these dumb triggers is not a problem for me. These ones are quite old. I've had these for, gosh, at least five years, maybe even more. I've had these for a long time. Um, and these are made for Canon, but they still work because they all have the same, it's all basically the same size. What's funny is I found that some of these, I have uh, eight of these, eight transmitters, no, four transmitters, four receivers, or eight, whatever, I got a bunch. Some of the transmitters are a little thick. The metal here is a little thick and it can be hard to get into some of the flash heads, but um, I have enough that fit that it's not a problem. But if you ever got one of these and didn't fit, you could file it down a little bit. Now they might make triggers for the Lumix lights now. Let's actually find out right now real quick because I don't actually know. P-H-O-T-T-I-X, uh, Lumix, let's just do that. Photix Lumix, let's see what it comes up with. Batteries, flash triggers. So it looks like there might be some flash triggers for Olympus, which is going to be the same thing. The Olympus and the Panasonic flashes are essentially the same thing, just FYI. Okay, so it looks like you might be able to get some for that, but if you can't or you're just picking up used ones, these dumb triggers work. So that's all well and good. So then I can just simply take my flash here. Oops, locked. Let's unlock that. And uh, let's see, do you have a transmitter and a receiver? Two different pieces. So let's put the transmitter on. And this is going to be. A little tough to fit in, but there it fits in. I realize I'm not even watching the Facebook page. So let's do that to make sure, see if there's any questions coming up while we go. Um, okay, so that's in there. And then just to kind of prove the point, I put a receiver on a Canon flash, so clearly not a Lumix flash. Um, turn that guy on. Okay, that's on. I'm gonna stand on here just so I can stand it up. And the receiver is on. It has a little power switch on the side. This is set to channel one and the um, let's see here, that is set to on, so this should fire. I know this is going to be really bright, but there you go. So that fired. Super. Very good. Um, okay, so that's all set. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you, so that, that's a great way to do it, inexpensive way to do it. This is the cool, fun thing that I just discovered. And the reason I keep glancing at my phone is because I actually verified this wanted to verify this with Panasonic before I talk to you about it. And as far as I know, and this is the early verification that I got, this is not an officially supported separate purchase, which is interesting. Um, it's, I guess, a parts purchase, but let me turn that off so it stops beeping. A parts purchase, but you can find these. So this little tiny guy right here is the flash that comes with the LX100. LX100 is a small Lumix non-changeable lens camera. It's a micro four thirds camera with a non-changeable zoom lens. It's, it's kind of a, well, my view of it was like a professional photographer's point and shoot. Really, really nice, small point and shoot camera. And it came with this tiny little flash. Well, this tiny little flash, it turns out, can be used as a wireless trigger on any of the other Lumix cameras. But it meant you had to buy an LX100 to get one of these. Well, no longer. What I found this morning was if I Googled, let's just go ahead and switch over to, where are we? Uh, there we go. If I just Google um, Lumix LX1, LX100 flash, I don't even know what the model number is, you'll see a bunch of things come up here. Um, so here's something on eBay. So let's go to this listing on eBay, and you'll see that there's a ton of listings on here between what, $42, $43, $42, up to maybe $52, $53, but this is all the same thing. Now, I don't know, and this is the part, so Lumix did get back to me, and they said this, they're not aware of these being available um, commercially. Like, this is, may not be a legit way of selling them. This may be gray market. It may be someone who's buying parts and reselling. Not really sure, so possibly not officially supported, but 
it's a flash. So for 40 bucks, you can get this little guy. And now when I put this guy on here, slap that on, it's got an, its own on off switch. It doesn't take its own batteries. It draws power from the camera. But now that that's on there, if I go back into here, you'll see that I have wireless options. So now wireless is turned on on there. So that's on. Now I can change the wireless channel. So what channel flashes do I want to trigger? We'll leave it on channel one. Um, that's for high speed work and then communication light high. That's just for it communicating to your um, to your other strobes. And then here's the really cool thing. So external flash is currently set to off because I set it there. That's, that's this little flash I just added. And then you have your A, B, and C groups. This flash, this um, little flash in here can be on in TTL or manual mode. But by turning it off, what that means is that I will now have this flash firing, but only to trigger, not that one, only to trigger the Panasonic lights. So this will not illuminate the scene. It will only tell these lights to flash. This is where you get into really cool flash photography, strobe photography, because you can put, uh, you can have a light that is only coming from the side, for example, on your subject, but still trigger it wirelessly from this guy. The way it works is this will still fire, but it fires a split second before the photo is taken and before this fires, and all it's doing is communicating to the light to tell it to fire and at what power to fire at. So let's see here, this guy, let's turn this thing on. We'll put this into receive mode, uh, remote control mode. There we go. It is on channel one, and that should be all there is to it. So let's set this over here, and that should, if I did everything right, fire. But it didn't fire because I did something wrong. Let's see here, remote control, channel one, it's all oh, C, bank C, what is this set to? Let's go back into this. Where were we? Uh, wireless, wireless. That's the high speed, communication light high, wireless setup. That's off, okay, that's off. A group, oh, here we go, A group. Did I have it? Channel one, A group. <sighs> TTL, maybe it just wasn't within range. Maybe that was the only problem. Let's get this thing, because everything appears to be right. Put that off to the side there so they can see the light. And I'm being completely daft and something isn't working, but I did this right before I came in here and it totally, ah, there it goes. It just wasn't pointing to it. Um, so I guess there would be one of the little drawbacks of this guy being smaller. You may not have quite the range, um, but generally what you would do is I would point this towards the light. That would probably be a smarter thing to do. Get that out of the way and ah, uh, there we go. See, that's the only problem. I just wasn't pointing it towards the light. So there you go. This tiny little guy is now available. So. To the chap who asked me the question about this, well, no, you cannot use this pop-up flash to trigger the light. You can, for between 40 and 50-ish dollars, get one of these guys from the LX100. So that's what I would recommend you do if you want to do that. Not technically and officially supported by Panasonic, but hey, we don't need everything to be officially supported for it to work. So there you go. Hope that was useful and moderately interesting. Let me just take a quick look here and see, oops, wrong page. See if there's any questions coming up on the Facebook stream and no questions. A couple of people watching. Thank you very much for being there live. And as always, if you have any questions that you want me to answer in a photo moment, please post them in the comments on this thread that you're watching right now or any of the ones that you watch. I will see those and I will address those in a future video, just like I did this one. And what else? Oh, um, so all these videos, by the way, these stay live. They stay, they live, whatever. They stay on Facebook. So they're always there. Um, but they can be kind of hard to find and sort through once they fall below the fold, if you will. I also move these over to my site, photoapps.expert. So if you go to photoapps.expert slash moments, you'll see all of them there. Or if you just go to the tips page, you're going to see the latest one there as well. And in there, I keyword them so that you can click on the keyword tag and pull up tags, uh, pull up related videos for that as well. So something else for you to know. Alrighty, that's it. I'm going to jump off of here. Thank you for watching and we will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.